Good morning, everyone. My name is Annie Fink, and I am the marketing coordinator for Wonderware California. Thank you for attending our Learn in 30 webinar today focused on digitizing mobile operator rounds. For the webinar this morning, we will be doing a short Q&A. Please type any questions or comments into the Q&A box, the chat box, or you can email us at webinar at california.wonderware.com. Now I'd like to introduce your presenters for today's webinar, Ben Velasco and Rob Marcota. Ben and Rob are both automation industry experts with Wonderware California. Good morning, Ben and Rob. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Annie. And uh, good morning, all. Thank you again for joining us. My name is uh, Ben Velasco, and I'm a water wastewater specialist here with Wonderware California. And today's topic is IntelliTrack Mobile Operator Rounds. This is a solution to digitize your pen and clipboard rounds and readings. And so I'll go over what the solution is, what it does, uh, some of the benefits. And uh, Rob Marcota, our product specialist and IntelliTrack uh, expert, uh, we'll walk us through a demo of the actual application and how to build the rounds using our IntelliTrack software. So let's dive right in. Why digitize your mobile rounds? Well, right off the bat, it uh, eliminates paperwork, uh, which saves time and increases accuracy. It supports your digital initiatives and continuous improvement. Uh, it increases your operational awareness, uh, accelerates operator training, and it's super easy to implement. It supports just about any mobile device that you're using. Uh, it works in a disconnected state, so it doesn't require internet. It's built on Microsoft SQL Server, and it has optional integration with uh, Historian, the Wonderware Historian, Viva Insight, our Cloud Historian, uh, Dream Report, um, SAP, and also any maintenance management systems like Maximo, Infor, or even Advantis EAM, much, much more than that as well. So pictured on the right here is the actual solution. This is what the operators will ultimately see um, and interface with. It's a real clean, simple solution running on an inexpensive tablet and we'll go more over that with uh, the, the demo here in a little bit. Let's talk about the traditional approach to rounds today. Many of you on this webinar might currently be doing something like this. So typically you're documenting information on paper and in a perfect world that information gets entered right away and filed neatly in a cabinet or or in a binder somewhere. But as many of us know uh, that often is not the case. Uh, sometimes the paper gets misplaced. Um, sometimes it piles up and um, some of the data gets entered, sometimes it doesn't. So the solution really becomes to digitize these rounds and readings. So mobile operator rounds eliminates paperwork altogether. You know, lots of facilities approach us simply with the, the desire to get rid of their paperwork. So mobile oper operator rounds is a great way to do that. Uh, it migrates your paper rounds to a digital format where you can use it on any um, iOS, Android, or Windows 10 device. So this capability really makes mobile operator rounds a great first step for your digital initiatives, your digital transformation, um, and also your continuous improvement. It's one of the simplest and easiest ways to modernize your operation today. And of course, eliminating paperwork comes with the added benefit of saving time because you, you don't have to, you eliminate the need for what we call double data entry. That is, you know, somebody doesn't have to take the paper sheet and re-enter it into the computer at a later time. Of course, this saves time, as I mentioned, but it also reduces your errors and it increases the accuracy of the data that's collected. So instead of manual data entry, now you can collect the data automatically, sync it to a Wonderware Historian, maybe the Aviva Insight, a reporting tool like Dream Report, or even your maintenance management systems, as I mentioned before. And with your rounds in a digital format, you can leverage the smart device itself and build in standard operating procedures and workflows, like I said, directly into the round. So it's this something that you can't really effectively do on paper. So just to give an example, let's say one of your operators is performing a round and he writes down a reading that is maybe a little bit high or somewhat out of tolerance. Now he's been doing this round for years. Uh, he knows exactly what the number means and he knows what action to take based on that reading. But what happens if he's out one day or you know, maybe he retires or maybe just somebody needs to come in and do the round in his place? Well, with IntelliTrack mobile operator rounds, you can enforce a standard operating procedure and a workflow. You can prompt every operator to perform relevant tasks during the actual round in real time. So you can have them even take a picture of the situation and attend to the round. You can even have your operations and maintenance manuals attached to the rounds themselves. So this really increases your overall operational awareness, your efficiency, and it ensures that your rounds are done accurately. And it also captures the tribal knowledge 
uh, to help your operators, your new operators, or even just different operators uh, get up to speed quickly. Of course, it all works without any connectivity required. So if you're a water or wastewater district, you probably have some remote sites that have bad service or maybe no service at all. Uh, no worries about that at all with IntelliTrack. All you have to do is you download the procedures when you do have connectivity that uh, let's say you come to the plant or the facility in the morning, sync up your device, and uh, now the rounds are ready to do without any kind of connectivity. So you don't need to set up any new telemetry, you don't need to you know, buy a new cell phone plan, it all works within the app. And so here's a quick rundown of what's included uh, with IntelliTrack software-wise. So of course, the mobile app here on the bottom, this is what the operators are gonna interface with. But it also comes with the procedure builder. That's the uh, actual application to build the round. Uh, the schedule manager to delegate the rounds and the duties to the individuals uh, based on the schedule. Um, the auditor plus another supervisory tool to uh, review the rounds as they come in and a reporting tool as well. So I'm gonna hand this all over now to Rob. Um, again, he's our product specialist. He's gonna do a quick uh, live demo here of the actual IntelliTrack solution. So again, we're gonna show the actual operator interface and also the how to build the round specifically um, for the uh, for the device. So take it away, Rob. Great, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. We uh, really appreciate your attendance. Uh, so this morning, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a brief introduction of using the app on IntelliTrack, as well as go over how to actually create that app. Uh, using the IntelliTrack uh, server database. So on the left-hand side, I have IntelliTrack server running. And then on the right-hand side, I have the uh, IntelliTrack mobile app running. And so you can kind of see Windows. And uh, the mobile app can be used with a Windows 10 device, iOS, or Android. So um, this webinar, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be using a mobile round and I have created one in Excel that's a pretty basic mobile round and it, we're recording two uh, pump hours, pump one app running hours and pump two running hours. And then what we're gonna be doing is inside of the app, we're gonna be computing the average between those two values. And then also we're going to be performing a uh, manual inspection of is the pump one in auto position. Now, typically on a paper mobile round, this would just be a yes or no answer and then the operator would just move on to the next task. Uh, in this mobile round, what we're gonna be doing is if the answer is no, if the pump is not in auto, we're gonna be doing an additional task. So that's just one of the cool features about IntelliTrack. And then in the last uh, input, we're gonna be uh, checking the total flow of the system. Just, uh, yeah, just a brief overview of this uh, mobile app that we're gonna be running through uh, today. So let's go ahead and log in to the mobile app. Now, one of the key features of using IntelliTrack is that you can have different users uh, use the app. And based on the specific user, this will allow them to uh, retrieve specific procedures based on their uh, user ID. So I'm going to log in to my specific profile and then click log in. Now, this is the main dashboard that you're going to see that when you, whenever you log in to IntelliTrack. There are the procedures that are due today, new in progress, completed, and overdue. And this will be uh, updated as you move throughout the day, uh, completing different rounds. Now I'm going to access this uh, procedure for the webinar on the procedures on demand. And I'm going to assign this mobile round inspection to myself. Now, the first uh, task that we saw from the Excel sheet was uh, entering the pump one running hours. Now you can down below, there's a list of all of the different values that have been entered prior. And you can also view this as a graphical representation. Zoom in and zoom out using the mouse. But let's go ahead and put it back into a detailed view. And then let's enter in a pump one running hours. And we're going to enter in 150. Now, like I said, we're going to be checking, is the pump one in an auto position? Now, this is a has a response list of a yes or no. So we have the option and we're going to select on no and then uh, click on the next icon. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna be changing the pump one mode to auto because of the answer was uh, no. And so we say, yes, we actually did complete it. And so the next thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be entering a pump two running hours. 
and then clicking on next. And so the calculation is performed automatically behind the scenes. And this is just a uh, proof. Can you check that? Yes, the calculation is correct. So 137.5. And then finally, the last uh, action to input is the total flow. So we're going to enter in a value of 90. And so that uh, completes the basic, really basic uh, procedure for this uh, demonstration. And so what you do at, at the end of it is you say, yes, I have completed the procedure. And now what I'm going to do, well, the dashboard updates and says, all right, so now there is one procedure uh, inputted or one procedure completed. And so now what we need to do is need to sync back, uh, sync the app back to the entire track server. And so now the uh, now the app will uh, transfer that completed procedure back to the Intel track server. And then we can go ahead and open up the Intel track server itself. Now, just a reminder, the uh, operator is going to be the person performing the actual rounds using the app. And then anyone that really wants to um, Update or update around or check it or do any type of management or scheduling, they're going to be the ones that's going to be using this um, IntelliTrack server configurator. The, uh, because this is where you are going to be entering in any specific times that you're going to want the uh, people to be performing the rounds or if you need to check or reject any actual rounds that were completed. So, this is the main user interface of the IntelliTrack. Uh, server and on the left hand side, a navigation screen and there's a procedure builder, which is used for making procedures scheduler for scheduling specific times. Uh, you can. The uh, reports and so we're going to do that right now. We're going to check the review uh, the report that we just created. So I'm going to click on the auditor plus and then I'm going to on the get data icon. And so that, that retrieves all of the reports that, that have been created over the specific time that we're looking at. And so we can see that the report that we just wrote or we just entered in is uh, red at the bottom because it has not been approved yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on that icon to open up the report and take a better look at it. And so you can see on the left hand side, these are all the inputs that the operator, us, we just entered in for uh, that round. We have the pump running hours, pump two running hours, and then the automatic calculation. So one of the neat things you can do is you can click on one of the inputs that you just had and apply a historical function to it to view the uh, rounds for uh, overall over the, over the last uh, time period. So we can see that this is a graphical re representation of the uh, rounds that we've entered. Now, let's say, for instance, that the uh, operator comes back after the round was completed and says, hey, uh, supervisor, I entered in 150, but actually that's incorrect and I need to change the value. So the supervisor would come in and click on the override button and they could go in and change the reading to a new value. And they do that here. And then immediately once they press save, the override is updated to say that, uh, and someone came in, admin, admin, came in and overwrote the value with a new value. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and approve this new round, hit, hit the check. We've, and, uh, we've approved the procedure and then we can go ahead and close out. And now we can see that the round has now been updated with a approved date and time. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the auditor, save it. And then I'm going to click on the procedure builder and we can view the, uh, the round that we just created and kind of see what the organizational structure is. Now, this is the, on the left-hand side, we have the navigation screen and then we have the procedure builder in the middle. And then on the right-hand side are, are all of the tools and functions that are used to create the rounds. Now, under webinar, we have that mobile round inspection that we just used. And if we double click it and open it, we can see it on the right hand side and kind of a tree structure. Let's uh, adjust the windows to get a little bit more uh, view. And if we click on the plus icon, you can kind of see uh, the tree structure for the mobile round that was just run. It's very organized. 
it's, it's uh, very sequenced, so you can see exactly how uh, well, the pump one is first, and then we check for the pump one is in auto, and then the pump two running hours, et cetera. And then you can kind of see, well, you can see uh, is pump one in auto, there's a condition, and the condition checks if the pump one is not on auto, then we'll uh, perform a new task. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out and create a new procedure. So open up that window again, and then I'm going to right click on webinar and click on new. So this is a brand new procedure that we're going to be creating. So I'm going to title it uh, mobile round inspection part two. And then we go to the advanced and select a specific user that is going to be assigned to this specific procedure. And I select on super user. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, drag and drop, simply just drag and drop a task group underneath this procedure. And this is going to be titled uh, pump one and two. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop very simply a new task underneath this task group. And the new task is, is any procedure that we are going to be using in the app. So I drag and drop it down and I give it a title and the title is shown in the title is shown in the app as well as the description. So you can name them differently if you'd like uh, pump one hours and then the description can be uh, record pump one hour counter. Now, in this description, you can have, you can write your own notes or steps. And then also, if you'd like to, you can also attach documents or PDFs for uh, manuals if you, the company has specific manuals that they'd like to include standing operating procedures into a specific step. Now, under a data type of what we're going to be entering into the report or into the task, we have the option of using numbers, text, date, response list, calculations, and uh, times. Because we're using hours, we're just going to be using a number. And the last thing we're going to need to do is because we're going to be computing the average between pump one and pump two, we're going to add a tag name so we can find that when we create the uh, specific calculation. So I'm going to call it pump one dot running hours. Cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a is I'm going to create a task to check the um, mode for pump one. So I'm going to check is the pump one in auto. Is the pump one in auto? So for the data type, instead of a number we're going to be entering, because this is going to be a yes, no, we're going to use a response list. Now, response list can have yes, no, yes, no, maybe. Um, you can have on, off, true, false. You can really have any pre-configured response that you would like. So we're going to use a response list. And we're going to click on the browse icon and click on these uh, yes, no list. Now, because this is the yes, no list, and we want to make the operator change the mode, if the answer is no, we're going to add a condition statement underneath this new task. So I'm going to drag and drop, very simple, a condition underneath this task. And we're going to title this uh, condition Campanado is no. And this is the title is just for my own understanding. And so when I look at the overall procedure, it flows and uh, I don't need to look at the details to understand what, what it is. Uh, so under the calculated expression, I'm going to select on value equals and then the option for the response list of no. And then for the data filter, this is just for filtering when the report is created. I'm going to select on an alert function. And then for severity, I'm just going to select on normal. So the condition checks if the answer is no. So what we need to do is 
add another task if the uh, if this condition actually is no, so we can perform the task to change the vote. So we're going to add this new task, uh, change pump one, pump one autocorrect. And then this, under the description, we will say uh, change pump one mode to item. Is it complete? And this also will be a data type of a response list. And the response list will also be yes, no. Great. So you can see that a lot of the configuration in IntelliDrag is just simple drag and drop changing settings, there is no scripting or programming required. Now, uh, the second thing that we're going to be doing is, we're, or the next thing we're gonna be doing is adding a pump two hours. So just like we did with the pump one hours, we're going to be titling this uh, up two hours, and then we're gonna be recording the pump two hour counter. And uh, the data type is also going to be a number. And under advanced, we're going to add a specific tag so we can get retrieve this uh, tag in our scripting editor for calculating the average. So underneath the pump two hours, we're going to add this new task for creating a calculation. And we're going to title it calc. average uh, running hours. And for the data type, we're going to use a calculation. And then to edit or define this calculation, we're going to click on the calculation expression and then click on expression editor. And this opens up the scripting editor for creating our, uh, for defining our average. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the general and click on the get value to retrieve the value for specific tags. So we double click on it and that opens up in the formula. And then we're gonna find the tags button and click on pump one dot running hours. Now the syntax of this calculation requires a comma and then ampersand null. So we're gonna enter that in and close parentheses. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna repeat that same procedure for retrieving the pump two running hours. Uh, and then close parentheses. And then we're just going to combine those two summations into one parentheses and then divide by two to get the average. Finally, what we'll do is we're going to validate this expression to confirm that the return type is in fact a number. And it is. Great. So now that calculation has been created. Uh, the final thing we're going to do is because during uh, when you create this calculation, when you create a normal task such as a calculation, the uh, when you run the app, it won't go through the actual step and show the calculation. So we're going to, for a sanity check, just show that the calculation is running correctly. So I'm going to click on manual advance. All right, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add one more task group for the flow. So we're gonna add that down below and title it flow. And then we're gonna add another task or we're gonna add the task for recording the flow value. We're also gonna be using a number. And for the unit of measure, we're going to be using under flow rate. Now these are, these are already pre-configured. And if you had your own units that you wanted to include into a report, you could do that simply by creating a new unit of measure and then adding it into the project and then you could select it from this list. And we're going to select on GPM. Now let's say when the, when the operator is running the rounds, they, there's always an expected range of value for that round. If it's, and if it's outside of that range, you're gonna wanna be notified. Or maybe you know that those, that range is going to be needed so the operator needs to enter in a value between uh, entering the value between those two numbers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that. We're gonna add, check the minimum maximum required 
and the minimum expected to be 100 and the maximum expected to be 300. We'll see that play out when we run the app. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and save the whole procedure. We're gonna go back to our locator and we're gonna right click on the procedure and click on release. And this will allow us to retrieve that procedure in the uh, mobile app. So now if we go back to the mobile app and we hit the transfer button, and it completes, we will be able to access that mobile round. So we're gonna click on procedures on demand, and there, uh, mobile number two, and we can assign it to ourselves. So if I click on the next icon, I'm gonna enter in, just like we did in the earlier, click on pump one running hours, value of 40, and we're gonna check that is the pump one an auto, I'm gonna select no. And I'm going to hit next. And then uh, pump one autocorrect. Has it been corrected? Yes, it has. And then for the pump two hours, I'm going to enter in a value for 70. So 70 plus 40 is 110. 110 divided by 2 is 55. So our calculation is running correctly. And finally, for the flow, we're this is the one where we had a minimum and maximum required value. So if I entered in a value outside that range of 50, that gives us a, 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 long, a warning value is outside the range. So if we click on the I icon information, we will see that there is a minimum entry and a maximum entry of 100 and 300 respectively required. So let's go ahead and enter in a value inside that range, 150, and then click next. So we've just completed the procedure. We're gonna click yes. Completed procedure has been updated inside the dashboard. Great. And then what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the procedure back to the IntelliTrack server. Now, if we want to look at that procedure just to confirm that it's it has been received, we can go to the Auditor Plus, click on the Get Data. And then you can see that, yes, in fact, this mobile inspection round part two has been retrieved. So one of the other key features of IntelliTrack is you can set up specific times or crews or shifts to run your procedures. So if you would click on the schedule manager and we go on our webinar, click OK, we could see a schedule representation of all of the procedures that have been completed over the month, week, day, et cetera. And so you see in the uh, schedule that I have different shifts already created, morning one, morning two, midday one, midday two, and there's already different rounds that I've created or executed prior to this webinar. And they're all green because they have been in fact completed. And if we scroll uh, the bar, we can see that when in fact individual rounds have been completed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close. Save the changes. And so uh, these are two examples of reports that you can create with IntelliTrack. On the left-hand side, we have a suction pump repair card and there's different values that have been entered in over the course of a uh, specific round. And then on the right hand side it is uh, daily metrics that a company might view how often or what their completion rate for specific rounds have been completed over specific days or times. So these are two different but similar reports that you can recreate with IntelliTrack and it kind of just shows the complexity but also importance and the types of information that can be shared with uh, IntelliTrack. Uh, ben, you still there? I'm here, Rob. Thanks for that. So we'll finish this off here just with a quick summary again of uh, mobile operator rounds. So, you know, again, just to summarize, it's a real simple enough tool to understand. And you can obviously see some of the immediate benefit from a, but from a bigger picture, maybe perhaps longer term vision, IntelliTrack really helps you enable that cultural change, uh, enable those best practices that really help increase efficiency and reliability you know, right on the front line of your operations. So what we're ultimately talking about here is improving your plan's reliability, 
its safety and its profitability and helping to maximize your return on your asset investments. Um, IntelliTrack ensures that workers do all the relevant tasks required to achieve that reliable operations and maintenance. And it helps you do this across your entire organization, all locations, all shifts, um, over across all your employees. And it really creates and enforces a standard within your operation. You know, while it's certainly a great tool to you know, eliminate paperwork, as we talked about, and save time, it's uh, more importantly, a really easy and simple step that you can take uh, to help prevent uh, your critical assets from failing and even mitigate your risks overall, whether that's uh, economic, uh, safety related, or even environmentally related. So we'll close this off now. Um, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, you know, thank you again for joining us. And if uh, you'd like to get started with IntelliTrack, go ahead and send us uh, your round sheets so that uh, maybe we can give you an example of what it might look like uh, you know, in the IntelliTrack solution. So feel free to reach out at the email here listed um, if you're interested. And of course, let us know if you have any questions. And I think, uh, Andy, if there are any questions, we can uh, go ahead and answer those now. Perfect, thank you, Ben. Um, we did have a few questions come in. Our first one is, can I take pictures during rounds? Yes, you can use the mobile app to take pictures and any pictures that you take will show up in the report that can be reviewed by the supervisor. And that you can also add notes while you're running the uh, round itself. So you can add pictures as well as notes uh, from the mobile app. Wonderful. And then can, Intelli in, can IntelliTrack push data to Aviva Insight? Yes, IntelliTrack has a driver that connects directly to uh, Insight for uh, specific reporting. Perfect. And then our last one that we have time for is, are there tools within IntelliTrack mobile operator rounds to enforce the order and or completion of the round? Yes, there are options inside when you create the task. You can require that a specific round or a specific task has to be entered or that a specific sequence needs to be followed. Additionally, you can add RFID tags or NFC tags as well as barcode readers to ensure that the operator goes to a specific uh, system or unit to ensure that they are actually performing that round. Perfect. Thank you, Rob and Ben, and thank you to everyone who attended. If anyone would like to review any portion of this webinar, a recording will be available on our YouTube and our, we and our website, california.wonderware.com, in the near future, and you'll be receiving a copy of it once it becomes available. Thank you again for attending, and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.